Well, she is a singer, songwriter, and dancer, and she's using TikTok and social media to spread positivity. But recently, she used her wide platform and influence to actually bring awareness to her own heritage. Montana Tucker used social media to share with her more than 14 million followers the importance of honoring her roots and educating all of us about the Holocaust. Montana, whose grandparents are Holocaust survivors, released a 10-part series documenting her journey, her family's history, and her grandmother's remarkable survival at Auschwitz. I think that your great-grandma knew she was going to be marched to her death. My mom tells me the horrific story of my 13-year-old grandma and her mother being put in the line for death while her sister was put in the other line, right here on these tracks. My grandma tried to stay with her mom, but her mom had told her, whatever happens, you stay with your older sister. That saved her life. The line she left went right to the gas chambers. I feel like I would have ran to the other line and said, take me with you. I wouldn't have been able to not go with you. I love you. Whew, Montana now joins us live as she gets ready to receive the Auschwitz Jewish Center Foundation Social Media Activist Award for her amazing work and series. Montana, oh my gosh, just watching that moment, you described it to me, but I, I, I now understand why you wanted to, to talk about that moment in particular. Just tell me what it was like to, to, to have that moment and what it's like to look back at it again and again and just feel the emotion. You know, I've seen this episode, this series, probably hundreds of times by now, and every single time I watch it, I get chills. Uh, nothing can describe the feeling of when I physically stood there. Um, even when I first arrived to Auschwitz, nothing can describe that feeling that goes over you. I think whether you're Jewish, not Jewish, whether you have family that was in the Holocaust or not, I think everyone will feel that feeling when you go and you stand there and hopefully when you watch the series. To go with my mom and stand hand in hand with my mom in the same spot that my grandma last saw her mother and had to see her mother get beaten and taken to the gas chamber. You feel all kinds of emotions. You're, you're angry, you're sad, you're confused. But then there was a sense of empowerment that I felt with my mom standing there being like, you know what, the Nazis could have never imagined that Jewish women would be standing here honoring their family. So it was definitely had a sense of empowerment as well. And how did that, how, how has that impacted just your re relationship with the most special women in your life now? I mean, this has got to have been an incredibly uh, powerful bonding experience for you guys. Oh yeah, I mean, my whole life I was always extremely close to my mom and my grandma and also my, my Zadie. Um, but going there and having that moment with my mom, I think we were already bonded forever, but I would say definitely has us bonded in a whole other way forever. And now I feel even more attached to my grandma. My grandma's still alive, but unfortunately suffers Alzheimer's of over 14 years. So mm. I know she doesn't really know what the work that I'm doing right now, but I know if she could know, she would be so proud of, of me and my mom and everything that we're doing. And you know, her whole life was dedicated, and, and my Zadies, they were both dedicated to Holocaust education and speaking at all the schools. So the fact that I'm now taking over the torch and, and, and doing the work is, is really powerful. So when you shared your family's Holocaust stories, you know, you received a lot of hate and, and you witnessed ignorance firsthand. And then you take a look at the stats from the ADL, right? 63% of young Americans are actually unaware that 6 million Jews were killed in the Holocaust. I mean, that is just staggering to me. So how does your docuseries aim to stop that hate and also the lack of knowledge? Because that must have tore at your heart. I, I think that's what the biggest thing is. It's the lack of knowledge. And so it's, it's so unfortunate and we want to blame so many people, but these, this, the younger generation just genuinely is not knowing. And they're, every state in the U.S. is not being forced to teach Holocaust education. And then all these younger kids have social media, right? So they're seeing their favorite athlete or their favorite rapper talk about, you know, spew anti-Semitic anti comments and say the Holocaust never existed and, and talk about how terrible the Jews are. So that's all they know and that's what they're going to believe. So that's why my series, coming from someone who before the series, 
because I never talked about Holocaust education. All of people were following me for my fun dance videos, for my collaborations, for my music. So to go on there and be able to have this platform of millions of people and stop everything that I was doing for 10 full days to post about Holocaust education, it was a huge risk. I before posted just a lighthearted photo of my grandparents in the past and had thousands of people on follow me saying, the Holocaust never existed. Of course, you do making this about yourself. So it was a big, big risk that I took, but I knew I had to take it because no one else was going to if it wasn't for me. And I knew I had the opportunity to reach millions of people and hopefully change people's perspectives. And I don't think I could have ever imagined the impact that it has made. And it's been doing so many incredible things. Well, I hope people are now responding and apologizing to you. Has that happened? <laughs> have you had, have any of the haters come back and said, whoa, I am sorry. You know what? I so I have never responded to a negative comment ever. Good, um, good for you. Don't empower I think, them. No, I think that's what they want, right? But right. I have my my some of my followers have gone into the comments and they get really upset when people write anything <laughs> negative, um, which I'm so grateful to have such an amazing support system. But I, I there was one comment that somebody made when the series first came out, and there was a discussion in my comments of different of, of some of my different followers, and they they were going back and forth, and by the end. The person who wrote the negative comment ended up changing their perspective and did apologize in the comment. So that was powerful. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And you want the domino effect. Exactly. Well, you've also been going to schools and you've been speaking about the Holocaust. I'm curious, what, what did kids ask you? Like, what are the most common questions? You know, speaking at the schools has been my favorite part about all of this, to be honest, because to really get there and you know, the teachers will tell me that these kids aren't really interested in class and they're not paying attention. And then I go there and they at first know me from, you know, my dance videos. So they don't realize, OK, what I'm, I'm here actually talking about is the Holocaust and Holocaust education and anti-hate. It's not just about what happened to the Jews. My my whole mission in doing this series and everything is is so people know don't hate somebody because of their religion, their race, their sexual preference, their ethnicity, you know. And, and, and so for me, it's been so powerful to really change their perspectives. A lot of people when I go to the schools, the kids don't really know what the Holocaust was exactly. They don't even really know. Um, they kind of make it like a joke at first. And then when I sit there and really educate them and talk about it, their perspectives change by the end of it. So I understand, before we let you go, you have a very exciting announcement to share. Do yes. tell. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. <laughs> I am going to DC next week. I am the official MC for Israel's 75th anniversary reception. Um, it's hosted by Michael Herzog, Ambassador Michael Herzog. And I just found out that I'm going to be presenting the special guest, Kamala Harris. So oh. this is a really, a really big, important, um, day for me and for everyone. And I know the White House is doing a lot to combat anti-Semitism right now, which I'm extremely, extremely grateful for. Well, maybe we can get you to come in studio here and tell us how it went yes. and maybe possibly sing. I'm just throwing that out there. Yes. Think about it. Yes, okay. yes. Oh yeah, but I'm All there, right. you're in DC. Let's do it, we have to. Montana Tucker, I will see you soon then. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for everything Thank you're you. doing. Thank no, you. we're very grateful. All right. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.